Hi guys, Dan Cooper here from Pro Tools Expert. And today I'm a very happy man as I've got myself a copy of Melodyne 4 that has just been released. As you would expect, it comes with some incredible new forward thinking features and workflows, some of which I'm going to show you around today. Over the last 10 years, I've been using Melodyne nearly every day in my music production workflow. And come to think of it, if my memory serves me well, it was also the first third party plugin I ever purchased. I've always thought and I'm sure many would agree that for pitch and time correction within digital audio production, Melodyne has always stood out as the best tool for the job. So as per usual, there are four points of entry available into the Melodyne world. Essential, Assistant, Editor and Studio. All at different price points and feature sets that you can find listed on the Melodyne website. In this video, I'm going to be using the standalone version of the top products in the range, Melodyne Studio. So I'm going to jump straight in and show you what I feel are some of the best features in Melodyne 4. The first being tempo shaping. Now what's clever is that Melodyne can trace and detect the tempo within a multi-track session that was recorded freely, as in not to a click, tempo unknown. So let me give you an example. At the top, we can load edit tempo and it brings up this display, which we can then increase the size of. And let me just play through so you can kind of see what's happening. Right, you can clearly hear the tempo increases at around bar 5 and Melodyne does an incredible job in detecting it and displaying it here. Remember this was not recorded to a click, so if I want to get a click working with this project and uh, let's say put it back into Pro Tools, it's very simple. I can very easily go to the top, File, Export, MIDI, and then you get a MIDI file that then you can import into your Pro Tools session and off you go. Now. Let's say I want to globally manipulate the tempo. There are a few ways to do this, but first you need to click and drag to make a selection. So let's say I want to exaggerate the tempo slowing down during the fills at the end of the section. So that's about bar seven to the end. Let me highlight that. We can hover our cursor over this selection and you can see the cursor changes and I can just click and drag. Very simple. There's lots of different ways of doing this, but I'm just gonna show you simply now. Let's pull that down and give it a play, see how it sounds. And before. And again. I mean, how easy is that? And to my ears, it also sounds fairly untouched, sonically that is. So how about the opposite, setting a performance to a fixed tempo? similar sort of thing, we can highlight the whole section and we can right click and it gives us some more options. And at the bottom we have make tempo constant. This would have got rid of any movement in the tempo at all. So let's now hear that. Remember, bar five is where it started to speed up. My honest opinion, this feature is completely insane and incredibly easy to use. I'm thinking of all the past band recording sessions where tempo was a problem in the tracking stages. I can think of quite a few projects where this would have quite literally saved the day. So you may have noticed these little circles next to the track mutes and solos. Yes, they are record enables, and this brings me quite nicely on to the next feature I love in Melodyne 4. This is now a pseudo DAW. For this review, I merely imported all the stems out of a Pro Tools session and imported them into Melodyne 4. But in essence, I could have quite easily mic'd a bunch of musicians and tracks directly into Melodyne 4 Studio. Now, this DAW feature isn't like what we've come to expect from other platforms such as Pro Tools or Studio One. This, I feel, is a functional way of tracking, much like recording in an older version of GarageBand. We've got volume, pan, audio interface, input and output, mute, solo, and that's about it. No fuss. I'm not sure if this is something I would adopt in my tracking workflow, but can definitely see myself experimenting with it when an opportunity arises in the future. It's a feature that's here now, which is great, and it can only be improved upon down the line. So the next feature I want to show you is the new sound editor. Now this is where Melodyne sets itself apart from previous versions. I like to think of this as the internal plugin section. 
which it isn't, I know that, but I'll show you why I think it is. We have an EQ section here with bands being a semitone wide, which you can see displayed under the main analyzer display. So I'm just going to play back the acoustic guitar in this track, and I'm going to play around with the brilliant contour, tonality, and comb controls at the bottom of the EQ section. Uh, it does work very similar to the tempo shaping feature I showed you earlier, where you can quite easily highlight sections and pull them in and out. So let's have a little go. Or single bands. And the brilliance. Home. Contour. And tonality. So next to EQ, we have the harmonic section that I think is going to be a very, very popular tool for the sound designers out there. Both the EQ and harmonic sections have those uh, four controls at the bottom that I mentioned earlier. And next to harmonics, we have synth which is going to be a lot easier for me to kind of play and you can hear what they do. So again with the acoustic guitar. I'm going to start here with format. Amplitude. And spectrum. We have resynthesize at the bottom here. And phases. Each of the features I have shown you have so many different layers of control and tweakability, I just couldn't go through them all in one video. So with that, what are my final thoughts on Melodyne 4? Well, it's an enormous leap forward in features, coupled with the familiarity that I'm used to from Melodyne, which I love. I was worried that this would have a steep learning curve, but it doesn't. That said, if you are new to Melodyne, you may have to put some hours in to get to know this. I've always felt that Melodyne is best used with musicianship rather than, for want of a better word, producership. The inclusion of the new tempo shaping, harmonic manipulation, EQ and synth sections tell me that Selemini have once again created a game changer in Melodyne. The ability to record into Melodyne 4 Studio is very cool, I love it. However, I do think a few more user features are needed. I like that version 4 looks and feels like previous versions. It's just a shame we don't have the ability to change the colour of the tracks or audio. I feel the audio being symbolised by this red and yellow throughout will make it probably quite difficult to navigate larger sessions in the Melodyne Studio. With all of that said, I'm awarding my very first Pro Tools Expert Editor's Choice Award to Melodyne 4. I've been waiting for that wow factor product for quite some time. This is definitely it. Go get yourself the demo, have a go for yourself, and please let us know what you think in the comments section below. I've been Dan, thanks for watching.